There are a few places in the world that I was lucky to visit. Iceland is one of them, then New Zealand, Guadeloupe in Caribbean and Japan that I talked about a few times already. There is one common denominator for all of these. There are islands. And that's what we are talking about today. Islands! Over the years I have found myself in these places and I always enjoyed myself. It got me to believe that there is something about island life that changes the mentality of people living there. I'm from Europe, my country is landlocked so we don't have any sea and the countries surrounding Czech Republic have different cultures and traditions even though they are not that significantly different. With Poland and Slovakia we share the roots of our languages and Austria and Germany even though they have different language they still eat sausages and schnitzels, so tomato, tomato. But islands are specific in a sense that there are no countries surrounding them, so the influence has to come on a ship. So of course Japan was influenced by China, Guadeloupe by France, New Zealand by Britain and Iceland by Denmark. But still, there is something about these places that shape the mentality of its citizens. That's of course not a new concept. Geomorphology and climate of places we live in shape our minds whether we want it to or not. It's obvious that someone from a warm and tropical climate will be a bit different from someone from a much darker and colder northern country. Don't get me wrong, we all share things like love, lust, hate and all those feelings, but talking about social skills and mental health, that's a different story. If you are from a place that is surrounded by mountains, you are prone to behave a little bit different from someone who lives surrounded by flats and open space. I'm not throwing everyone in one bag, of course there might be warm mountain people and cold island people. I don't want to hear your comments like, uh, actually I am from blah blah blah, shut up! <laughs> Exception to the rule, I get it. What I'm trying to say, very clumsily, is that I've noticed a different mentality of people that live on islands from those I know from my home. So let's talk about islands and why I love them so much. Everybody knows about politeness of Japanese, bowing and respect they hold in their culture, but you can't disregard that mentality with just, oh it's a culture, it's a culture thing. What does that even mean? You don't see me running around in traditional Czech kroy and singing songs. No, Japan is Japan because it's an island, because it was closed for over 200 years and because they have their fair share of natural disasters. I've seen places that were completely destroyed by tsunami, houses fallen and cities wiped, but they kept on bowing and smiling. And I believe it's because of its geological position. Japan always had and always will have earthquakes and tsunamis. And because Japanese know this fact, they respect nature in a different way than other countries might. Houses fall and get destroyed, people lose homes while being fully aware that this might happen again. This anticipation of unpredictable nature shaped Japanese mentality to appreciate the calm before the storm. Respect everything and everyone since you never know when you're going to need help from your neighbor and the fact that things you possess today might not be here tomorrow. I truly believe that this is one of the reasons why Japanese are the way they are. But now let's get to some stories from these places. I already talked about an island in Seto Inland Sea, because if there is one thing I love more in islands, it's even smaller islands. I went to see Teshima and I spent some time in Shoroshima and it was just wonderful. On Shoroshima I got this free rental bike from the place I was staying at and it was this old rusty bike that I was driving around and there was no one. Maybe because it was winter, I don't know, but I was just exploring in my own pace and slightly nodding my head to say hi to locals who were looking at me from time to time. And then I found a sign with an arrow and a picture of a little shrine on top of a hill, so I decided to go there because honestly I didn't have anything better to do anyway. I dragged the bike up the hill and there was another flight of stairs that I didn't expect, but after getting to the top, and just looking around and seeing all the little islands around me with nothing but sunshine and a little breeze. It was so peaceful. If only I could teleport myself right now. And then New Zealand. Unfortunately, I don't have much to say about New Zealand because I was there only for one month and I was mostly just on hikes and trails and just exploring the nature. And those are really nice. It's a beautiful country. I took the Abel Tasman coast track, which was super cool because there are tidal crossings which means that you can only continue the track if the tide is low. So you have to either pace yourself correctly or just wait for the tide to go away. I walked over them barefoot because at some parts the water would still get up to my knees, but when the tide is high, those places are completely flooded. So that was really interesting, just walking around, camping and exploring the nature. But when I travel, I just need to talk to local people or volunteer or do something to understand the culture 
and I just didn't do that in New Zealand. But I remember one example when we were camping and I think I was in the kitchen and then suddenly there was this woman that like stormed in and started talking to me. She was very friendly and suddenly she was telling me her story, why she's there and that her daughter graduated or something and then she's going with her husband to some place and they are going to help her move and blah 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 and all that stuff. And I was just nodding my head trying to understand what she's trying to tell me and before I knew it she was gone and I was just left alone like what just happened? I didn't even know. But yeah, people in general just seemed really friendly and really sporty as well. They walk barefoot a lot I think and yeah it was a nice chill place that I should probably go back to and try to understand Kiwis better. And then Guadalupe, oh my god, if there is one place on this planet where I would love to be right now it's this place. It's a small Caribbean island with palm trees, sand beaches and rum. A lot of rum. And it's a good rum as well. I remember the moment I arrived, rented a car and got to the place I was staying at. I think it was like a homestay or something like that. And this lady just left us with her apartment, pointed at the rum in the kitchen and told us to drink how much we want. It was late night, the streets were completely empty and I was really tired after the flight. So I just took a glass of rum, sat down on the balcony and somewhere from the end of the street, from some bar, I could hear a saxophone with this classic movie style almost like sad and slow solo and it was a really cool moment and I was just sitting there drinking the rum thinking I'm gonna like this place. Guadeloupe is a really small island in the shape of a butterfly, the right part is called Gran Terre and is mostly flat, the left part is called Bastere and has a volcano you can climb and is surrounded by lush forests and waterfalls and it's a really beautiful place. But as if Guadeloupe wasn't small enough my favorite place was these little islands that belong to Guadeloupe, called Les Sands, I guess, I don't know, I can't pronounce French. But wow, those islands, I don't know why, but after I got off the boat that got us there, I immediately felt comfortable. Just few streets with some houses, you can't get lost really, and I don't know, it was a nice place, chill people, they showed us how to drink tea punch, which is where you take a glass, you put some sugar in it, and a few drops of lime, and then you mix it and pour over white rum and it's delicious. But yeah, I enjoyed my time in Guadeloupe. And Iceland? I don't need to talk about Iceland in this video, I think. I talked about it in my last video that you should go watch if you want to know how Iceland shapes people, where I try to explain how it really feels like to live in Iceland. But that's it, there's nothing more. I just love islands and I wanted to share this, so here we go. Go explore islands when you can, I guess. But in the meantime, you should subscribe and click the bell button as well and I will see you next time. But until then, ciao!